Welcome to this month's Fourth Art Saturday video hop with crafters and artists making crafts and art. This month's theme is one technique in three ways. Hello survivors, hi family and friends. This is Roy from Bootsy Sweetheart's Guide to Life and Other Disappointing Experiences with another fourth Sat Art Saturday video hop put together and organized by the Merry Atelier, uh, whose link will be in the description below. It is a hop where, where craftspeople follow a theme not like a challenge, but more like an how to express yourself uh, within certain parameters. This month, the instructions were review a piece of art you created and choose a technique you used on that piece. Interpret that technique at least three different ways. For example, stencils could be used in multiple ways. A box could be covered using different ways. I think Mary wrote that in, for me specifically. Um, it says, if possible, look, show your original piece. Oh, I'm not so sure I can find an original piece after all these years. Uh, the hop participants will be in the description below. Please, when you finish, if you get to the end <laughs> of this video, please hop to the next person. Thank you, Mary, and thank you to all the wonderful craftspeople I share this hop with. Um, so it's no secret um, that I do patchwork, that I like putting little pieces of fabric together. Um, sometimes it's not so little. Somewhere in all of this, this is very similar to my last video. These are the same samples. Somewhere in here, of all these pieced pieces, is um, a vest I'm making for a church project that we got uh, started right before COVID and now um, we had to stop. Um, but putting pieces, whoa, putting pieces together uh, is fun for me. And it this probably started not with this piece, but with paper piecing. And these are all little bits and pieces of uh, fabric that I placed together and did some paper piecing. And this was a lot of fun for me. Um, you know, uh, in in the old days, see how I organize things? I'll show you this at some point. Um, in history, especially American history, I'm sure it's not any different anywhere else, we uh, conserved everything. There was nothing left to waste. So when people were done making clothing, they had bits and pieces of fabric left over and naturally paper uh, patchwork quilting came in to be. So I do this kind of thing, um, sewing pieces together. These are going to be pockets, one application, number one application, pockets for um, journals or maybe patches on clothes or handbags. Um, I have a bunch of them. Here are some squares that I'm making. Again, patches, pockets. If I hold it this way, the lighting's a little better. Uh, and again, they're all put on foundation fabric. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them are to make them sturdy and useful. And I make different sizes. I have large ones and small ones, and uh, even make Christmas tree ones. The One of the inspirations was uh, for a video that I did for one of the hops, where I made a uh, patchwork heart. And again, that's on fabric, and this is going to be a tote someday, <laughs> someday soon. So that's a second application. 
maybe I went overboard with applications here. The third application that you may know is I make boxes. These, this was an Amazon box. Don't look at the lint. This was an Amazon box that I decorated. And uh, I created this with uh, Amazon cardboard. It's not the size of the original box. And um, then I got some busy fabric, which gave me the idea. It gave me the idea that patchwork would be pretty, piecework would be pretty on one of my Amazon boxes, my Amazon cardboard boxes. So this was another application of my use of patchwork, crazy patch. Some of it's not, some of it's just regular pieced quilting. Um, so for today, I thought I'd do a quick um, project on how I make, how I'll make, this is my first attempt, how I'll make a little um, cell phone pouch from scraps of fabric uh, to carry around. It'll be padded and um, something you can carry and provide a little bit of protection. So this is my answer to this month's hop. Uh, please stay with me and see how quickly this goes together. Thanks. Well, this video is more about technique than it is about finishing a project, but I thought since the concept was what technique, how you use a technique in your art and craft, um, I would just do a quick project um, on how I use pieces of fabric sewn together in a crazy patch way. These are squares that I make ahead of time. Uh, they're fun to make when you have a, a brain freeze <laughs> and you can't think of something to do. So this is going to be the outside of the pouch on the front part. That, and this will be the lining for the inside of that part of it. I've cut out a piece here for the binding. This will be the back of the phone case. And I've already prepared that with this lining. Again, even in the construction, I've used uh, parts, pieces of fabric that were left over. I did very little measuring here. I just took the cell phone. Ooh, that's really a lot of light. <laughs> I took the cell phone and approximated the size of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is make one solid piece of fabric out of this by sewing these two pieces together. Now, um, I don't think it really matters which two pieces go together, but I kind of would like this not to be on the edge because it's very dramatic. So let me sew these together with a quarter inch seam. So now this is sewn together. They don't match quite because these are not uh, exactly the same size, but we can square that up or I can square it up um, before we put on the binding. So what I'm going to do now is do some just plain ordinary unimaginative imaginative quilting of this to hold the quilt sandwich together and the pouch will have some nice cushioning for the cell phone so I'm just going to run some stitches around and uh, quilt this the most uh, imaginative or decorative but this is really a um, utilitarian pouch um, now I'll 
job is to square it up just to double sure that the face of the pouch is going to be big enough. Um, and it's a simple process. Just make sure you find one straight edge. You see how crooked this is? And I'm lining it up. I'm lining this up as best I can. I'm just arbitrarily, well, I gotta come in a little bit more because it's here it's a little shallow. You see there? All right, once I get one edge straight, I can use the uh, that edge as a guide for the others. It's a little thick, so the rotary cutter can have a little problem. So now I can use this as this guide for the other side. So it's coming in at, let me see what it's coming in at. It's coming in at three and three quarters. Okay, three and three quarters. Now, to double check again that the cell phone is going to fit. Let me just straighten this out. Now here I'm just making sure that enough of the raw edge sticks out here and there's no um, lining, no lining or um, batting showing. Now this is a new blade too. Hmm. All right. So now this side we do the same thing. I'm lining it up with the straight edge of the face of the pouch. Put a little elbow grease in it there. Cheap cutting board, it's showing all the cuts. So now what I'm going to do is match the back panel. Here again, I'm not measuring. I'm not, there's no, I better pin this so it doesn't move around. Sorry about that. I don't want it moving around on me. <laughs> no moving around allowed. For people who are a little shy about measuring, this is fun. <laughs> I'm not. I'm kind of haphazard. Now, the Mary Althea, Mary Abrams, is, oh, did I slam that? I'm sorry. Is um, just a fearless crafter. She jumps in and just crafts. There are no right or wrongs. Um, she doesn't do a lot of accurate measuring. And I think just love that about her and I try to follow the lead only because <laughs> that's the way I do things you know I'm a I'm not the measure twice this is all lined up you, I don't know if you can see it I'm not the measure twice cut once person I usually wind up cutting three or four times <laughs> oh my father was much better about it than I was. I missed this. So straighten that out. I think it's good to be fearless if you're not making a garment. <laughs> no, in crafting you, it depends, you know. Never know that I was, took a lot of drafting courses. So, the only issue I have now is the raw edges. So what I decided to do is ahead of time I'm going to bind the top edges of the front and the top edge of the back. I'm not sure which I want to top. This 
is the top. All right, I'm going to call this the top. So what I've done is taken a three inch piece of fabric and made a binding out of it, double fold binding, folded to the middle, pressed it, and now I've folded it again in half and I have the binding. So this binding will go on the top. Yes, this is going to work. So what I'm doing is pinning the binding. And I'm letting it overhang. Again, I'm not measuring. It'll be fine. I'm placing the fold right at the top of the back piece, back panel. Here we go. Pin that. I'm a pinner. Gotta be a pinner. Oh, that's, that pin is no good. A dull pin. It must have gone through my finger once or twice. <laughs> perfect. This is going to be perfect. Now, I'll cut this. Well, I'll cut it when I'm done. <laughs> Back to the machine. I'll sew this. See the raw edge of the top piece is covered. Chop this off. I'm doing it by eye. <laughs> Remember, be courageous. This is fine. No one's going to see the inside anyway. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the front panel. Maybe I'll use clips this time, just to be different. I love these clips. Love, love, love the clips. The good ones are expensive. So if you find good ones, buy them up. Back to the machine. All right, that's sewn on. Trim it off. I'm going to trim this side off. It's going to be caught in the seam and it's going to be caught in the binding that goes around the front. Close this up so I can cut myself. All right, so now this is the lining on the inside. I didn't have the same fabric so they don't match. Now see, let's just double check. This would be terrible if you make it and it doesn't fit. It's going to be a tight fit, but we want it to be a little snug. So now I'm going to sew up the side seams. This is the outside. Outsides together, in this case right sides are the outsides. And I'm just going to sew, leave the top open and sew around very fine quarter inch seam because it's a little tight. some good fortune in that there was enough fabric it was wide enough that I could make a regular sew the faces together turn the bag inside out right side out and uh, in your traditional way I have videos on this and uh, there'll be more I'm gonna make a lot of these uh, through the next couple of months and I had you know we can add a handles on it the purpose of the video, again, the purpose of this activity was to show you how I use a technique of sewing fabrics together, small pieces of fabric together, uh, to make my projects. And the end result is a nice cell phone pouch that's a bit padded. So if you 
drop it. Hmm. No harm done. Um, so this was fun, Mary. If uh, you keep coming up with the challenges like this, I'm going to be staying with you a very long time because I'm having a lot of fun. Um, please be sure to check out the people who follow uh, this video in the description below. Say hello to Mary. Um, enjoy this kind of sewing and crafting. By all means, please stay safe. Stay well. Stay smart. And bye for now. Oh, excuse me. Bye for now. Hi. Yeah. Well, he should have gone the other way. He knew the traffic was bad. Thank you.